Kamali taking you through some of the things people are talking about and some of the stuff they're sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. AOC describes the conditions migrants are kept in as horrifying as it's revealed that US border control agents have a secret and pretty offensive Facebook group. French politicians to discuss how to keep hate speech off social media. Child marriage affects hundreds of millions of people. We look at an underreported element of the story, child grooms. And marriage at the other end of the scale as two centenarians get hitched in the US. And to top of our news feed, migration in America. A news website called ProPublica has revealed some people working for the U.S. border agency are part of a Facebook group that mocks migrants and the politicians who are trying to improve how migrants are treated. Ezra has the details. A secret Facebook group of U.S. Border Patrol agents has been exposed by nonprofit news site ProPublica. Thousands of border agents share jokes, derogatory comments and even sexist memes about migrants. The group is called I'm 1015, a border patrol code for migrants in custody. That was a vulgar, disgusting and vile page. That shows, unfortunately, that there are many within CBP who become desensitized to the point of being dangerous to the migrants in their care. You're and to their co-workers. There are many good agents. There are many good agents who are overwhelmed by those, like those who were part of that Facebook page. Some members claim the photo of a migrant and his daughter who drowned in Mexico was a fake or had been edited. These do not represent the thoughts of the men and women of the U.S. Border Patrol. Um, each one of these allegations will be thoroughly investigated. They're already, we have already turned this into the Office of the Inspector General and our own internal CBP Office of Internal Affairs to begin the investigations. Border agents in the group also had U.S. politician Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in their sights. She's toured a detention center in Texas with other Democrats. Do you have any comment about what was posted about you in the alleged Facebook group? I mean, I think it's just a, it's, it's just indicative of, of the violent culture that we saw on the inside. Lawmakers say immigrants there are being detained without running water and had been told by border security agents to drink from the toilets. Meanwhile, scores of people urged the politicians to lobby for the closure of the detention centres. It seems that France is really in the vanguard, leading the fight against hate speech online. They've just announced a number of ideas that recently could change the way people, not only in France, use social media. Now, Parliament there is about to discuss some pretty ambitious new legislation. Here's Elena in Paris. <laughs> The new law aims to criminalise all forms of sexist, racist and homophobic hate speech expressed online in France. It would force social media firms like Twitter, Facebook and YouTube to take those posts down within 24 hours or face a fine of up to 4% of their annual global revenue, a figure that could run into the tens of millions of euros. The law was the brainchild of one MP, Laetitia Avia, a black spokesperson for Emmanuel Macron's La République en Marche party, who says that she's inundated with racist statements on Twitter every time she appears on TV. Social networks, especially Facebook, are keen to show they're cooperating with the French government. Last week, Facebook said it will share the account data of anyone publishing hate speech with the government. Critics say the law is too ambitious, some saying that it relies too much on social media firms to police themselves, and others saying it poses a risk to freedom of speech. The government says journalists and others concerned about freedom of speech needn't worry, because the law only intends to focus on hate speech that is already criminal, as opposed to anything that counts as a legitimate opinion. And all it's doing is speeding up the process, instead of forcing the victims of racist insults online to go through a long judicial judicial process just to see those comments deleted. The French 
President Emmanuel Macron promised France would take a lead on this last year at a dinner for Jewish charities at a time when people are worried about growing anti-Semitism. It isn't the first European country to legislate on the subject. Germany passed a law last year which has been criticised for being too constraining and encouraging censorship. The French government says that its law is more specific and that there's no risk of it encouraging censorship or legal attacks on journalists. All right, let's take a look at some of the other things that caught our eye on social media. Now, this is an account called Mini AOC. It's run by someone who calls themselves Ava Martinez Mum. It's also linked to an account called Sicken Tirade, run by a man called Salvatore Shatter. The account features videos and tweets mocking the policies of Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez. The child being used to mock AOC is eight years old. She's made to say things against socialism and uh, deny the climate crisis. It's equal parts child cruelty and expert trolling. AOC here, and today I want to talk about socialism. Just kidding, no I don't. Actually, I want to talk about Nancy Pelosi. So, Nancy Pelosi. Now, Nike has removed these sneakers, the Air Max One Quick Strike 4th of July from sale after Colin Kaepernick complained and social media called them out. The flag on the back of those shoes is known as the Betsy Ross. It's apparently the first American flag. Nike's pulled the shoes because they depict the old flag used by some white nationalists to symbolize America's racist past. The flag apparently dates back to the 1770s and it was used by the American armies during the Revolutionary War. It's called the Betsy Ross because American folklore says she designed it. That is probably not true. And Kim Kardashian is changing the name of her new underwear line. It had been called Kimono, but Japanese people complained the name was cultural appropriation. Kimonos are traditional Japanese robes or gowns. Now, when Kardashian released the line, the hashtag Kim, oh no, started trending. Japan is even sending patent officials to the US to have it out with the Kardashian clan. Kim says she will announce a new name for her underwear in due course. Now, it's being reported that the wife of the ruler of Dubai, Princess Haya, has left him and gone to Germany with their children. Take a look. Now, next up, we're going to take a look at child marriage. Now, girls are forced into marriage every day across the globe, but they're not alone. It's happening to boys too. The United Nations says that 765 million people under the age of 18 are made to marry. Of those, 115 million are boys. 23 million of them were made to wed before they were 15. Now, here is the story of one of those boys, Umez Malik Dom from Kathmandu in Nepal. <laughs> It is Dukman is Dei Bio, Ani Kanabanaira, Koipani China, Sadi Sotterba Sambayo, White Sotterba, Ani Ekbaras Bio Sadiway, Atharabas Bio. So Poijana Cordaina, Ani Josgo, Gorma Pavam Cha, Adukcha Derita, Koreale. Ring the Derita. अनि कमाई रहा सा अनि बियाजे में सब पैसे गए रहा सा खाना पानी खाई रहा पुक दे ना अब के घर में खुशी छाई ना अनि दुख भी छाई ना अब जस्तो सा जस्तो राम रही छा अब कमाई रहा खाई रहा सा अनि 22-25 बस मार राम रहो हूँ छा कितने महीने पच्चीस महीने आठ महीने को कमाई रहा दिन रात मेहनत करी रहा बच्चा को पढ़ाने अन्य 
Okay, let's go around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Tuesday. Now, artificial intelligence in Australia has come up with a new and highly effective flu vaccine. It's the first time in the world a computer has formulated a successful drug. The computer is called SAM and researchers gave it data of vaccines that work and vaccines that don't. The AI then processed the info and invented this new drug all on its own. The vaccine is set to be trialled in the United States. A British singer whom the BBC accused of sexual assault says people in such situations should be given anonymity by the courts. Cliff Richard was apparently the subject of a sexual assault investigation back in 2014. He was never arrested or charged, but the BBC flew a helicopter over his house and most media widely reported what was happening. So Cliff successfully sued the BBC for invasion of privacy. In seconds, everywhere I'd been on the planet, had heard this story, whether it was Australia, New Zealand, Southeast Asia, Holland, Germany, Durham, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, France, Italy, Spain, all over Britain. My name went out with this allegation attached to it. Will I ever get over it? I can get past it. I am past it. I'm on tour now. I'm having the most wonderful time. But will I ever get over it? I can't see how any individual particularly because of the way the internet functions, there are people on there who still believe in that stupid saying of no smoke without fire. Now, here is a scary look at the future of warfare. The United States Army is testing personalized drones for each of their soldiers. The thing's called the Black Hornet PRS, which stands for Personal Reconnaissance System. It's tiny, it measures just 16 centimeters and weighs only 33 grams. It has two cameras, a thermal imaging camera, and a range of two kilometers. The drones have been sold to both the French and British militaries. They're made by a company called FLIR Systems. Now, Facebook says it will ban ads which encourage people not to vote. The suppression of African-American votes through misinformation campaigns run by Russians had a significant effect on the 2016 US presidential election. Facebook says it's developed artificial intelligence which is able to spot ads which are designed to suppress voting and that they have a team of engineers, data scientists and lawyers paying attention to the kinds of ads that are being bought. This policy will just apply to the United States initially, Facebook say. And this thing is the Paramonovius Night King. It's a new species of bee fly discovered in Australia and was named after the character from Game of Thrones because it's 2019 and that's the sort of thing that people do. Paramonovius was discovered in Western Australia and apparently it rains in the winter time and has a crown of spine-like hairs. Interestingly, it lays its eggs inside other bugs. The bugs then hatch, sorry, the eggs then hatch and eat the bug from the inside out. They then go north of the wall and form armies of the dead. Not really, that's Game of Thrones. And last up, we have a story from America which shows true love can strike at any time. Now, these two people riding around on these scooters have just got married. They're Phyllis and John Cook, and they met at a nursing home in Ohio. He's 100, she's 102, but I don't think she can be accused of being a cradle snatcher. The lovebirds started dating a year ago after they both lost their spouses. Well, congratulations to Mr. and Mrs. Cook. Well, we just were compatible in, in a lot of ways and found ourselves, you know, enjoying each other's company. Tell you the truth, we fell in love with each other. I know you think that may be a little bit far-fetched for somebody our age, but we fell in love with each other. Oh, good old Phyllis. Right, that's all for the news feed team. Reach out to me with your questions, comments, complaints, and suggestions. You'll find me at Kamali Melbourne. You'll find us 24-7 on the YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Follow, subscribe, and add, and I will see you again tomorrow.